Hey guys, this is Odd1 Gaming. This is going to be another Dragonair Silent Gods video. Today I want to talk about something that's extremely important for your progress going on. If you're watching this today and you know you started the server same as me like when it was on global or if you started this a little bit later and you're getting close to the end of the Clipsydra torrent, this is really important because you really need to keep this in mind as Honestly, this can be the difference between you be able to progress pretty easily or basically just getting yourself in a little bit of a pickle. Why am I saying this? Well, after this day ends, so for example, for me in exactly one day, the rebuild your heroes to get back growth material is not going to be available anymore. So what I can do right now is I can go and just reset all of my heroes. OK, I can do that. I can confirm and I will get back as you're going to see all of my xp potions all of my uh materials for ascending and all of the gold that i used to do that <clears throat> and now why is that so important well if you don't choose the right team that you keep when this one uh, ends like i said again you might be stuck a little bit so what do you need to keep in mind what's the best team what do you have to do like what is the best option well in the early game the number one priority for you is going to be to find a team that's is balanced where you know you have a tank you have a healer you have dps maybe a second healer so you need at least a core of five that can do some good stuff but at the same time you might need a, another flex one so what you gotta do is first of all you gotta look through your roster okay mine might not be as relatable because i have quite a few legendaries epics and stuff like that so it's not it's not you know the easiest however if we think about the free champions that we get if you're somebody that's free to play has not spent at all the main core that i would suggest for you to have at the beginning would be the adventurer because he's gonna always be amazing as you can flex you know he's like a flex position he can be your full dps as fire but at the same time you can switch elements for him okay if you've not seen my previous video he's your number one priority unless you have a stacked account as he can be the dps in fire he can be your protector with the shield and also do damage with a with the battle skill or you can go with lightning which again can do some damage and some control he could be your last spot in case you need him to be the other uh you know the right element to combine with your lightning or necrotic depending or necrosis depending on what your best team so number one you should keep and definitely keep in mind is the necrosis and the thing that you always need to keep in mind is if you click over here on the element you need to try and find a combination of three heroes okay at least three heroes but the more the better because well if you have three heroes of the same element you gain 20% attack, 20% defense, uh, percent, and then 20% defense, 20% HP, uh, sorry, 50 defense, 500 HP, and 50 attack. Well, this one is massive because you know what? At the end of the day, this is going to be the difference sometimes between you beating some content or not. And this one you can constantly improve by going over here. Let me show you. If you click over here and then you go down to the psychic core, let me move myself a bit here. And then you're gonna go to elemental affinity you get the element the solvents every day okay affinity solvent you get them all over the place so every time you upgrade stuff here it shows you for three hero affinity effect you get these stats same thing three hero three hero and then we go to the next thing again three hero so this is your first priority first priority is to get <clears throat> a core team of three but once you get to this point you need to start specializing so again it's really important who do you choose to go first do you go fire with poison do you go ice and necrosis or do you go lightning and radiance like what will be your best team but if we move over again to see like what we have as a, as a base option the logical thing would be for somebody that's early and progressing through the game the logical thing would be to go and uh sell, go with fire and poison because like i mentioned your first one is going to be the adventurer okay number one is going to be the adventurer he's a flex spot number two you have the tank in horus okay he's a really good tank he's fire he has sustain he has taunting he even has a decreased attack unfortunately i really i really wish this was booked 100 percent. but even if it's not 100 percent, that decreased attack being on the battle st skill is huge because it's going to help you in the most important dungeon dun dun 
why can i not speak today it's gonna help you in the most important dungeon early on which is the grave of venom as that boss hits really hard so having the decrease attack is helpful for him plus he brings you uh he has an amazing passive that has self-sustain and he also brings you an aura increases all ally max hp by 24 percent in all battles so you basically have your captain aura for all the battles so horror should be your tank uh, the adventure should be your DPS more support if you need. Then the third one that I, I believe should be mandatory is Hexandra because she's free and she's amazing healer. Her heal is amazing on this one. It has a good range. This also heals and cleanses one debuff, which is going to be again good for the Grave of Venom as it's going to be able to cleanse that decreased defense. Then she also has an, a pretty good passive and an, again, uh, Captain Aura, but this is not the best. Now you're going to have two more slots available, okay? So you have the score, what else are you going to need? Well, in order to prioritize the number one most important thing, in my opinion, early on, uh, you need AoE damage, okay? Because number one most important area of the game is going to be the Goblin Lair, okay? And, well, what do you need in the Goblin Lair? If you go over there and see what's gonna happen here well we have waves so we have lots of waves of enemies that we have to kill in a certain amount of time so if you see for example the team that i used here which is not a free-to-play team but I have aoe damage aoe damage aoe damage so the last two spots should try and be some aoe damage for you or if you have a <coughs> maybe one aoe damage and another person that brings decreased attack the reason why I'm emphasizing so much on the decrease attack is because that's really important for the Grave of uh, Venom. One hero that I strongly suggest, I think this is going to be, this hero is going to be the number one hero I'm going to do a hero spot spotlight on, if you have her, is Yola. She's just amazing. She just brings so much. Basically, she brings you over here, if you have a look... She brings the AoE triple hit that has a chance to silence and then from her passive to stun. She also has, when fully scrolled up, 100% chance to land decrease attack. That's massive. On the A2, again, two hits that put silence and then has a chance to stun. And then this is the passive. When attacking, there is a 40% chance to change uh, the silence into stun, which again is huge because that they're not gonna move but not only that she brings a captain or of ally uh increases all allies attack by 24 percent in all battles so this is massive so as an example she could be a good one or for for example maybe you have somebody like an eli okay Eli is going to be good because this hit can be pretty amazing. Like, if he shoots this one, he can do some pretty good damage in Goblin. The other one, single target, and he has an interesting passive. But again, he brings ally attack in all battles. So if you don't have a Yola, you can go with, with Eli. But you kind of get the gist of it. You're trying to get yourself at least one more AoE damage dealer alongside your Traveler, okay? Because just the Traveler himself is not going to be enough to do enough to do the damage for the goblin lair to pass it so i don't know there's there's so many there's so many new heroes that have been added that i'm not going to be able to know every single one there were 80 of them but keep that in mind so the principle is you need to have after this day finishes you need to have two teams ready or like you know six seven champions even though you don't bring everybody to 90 you might be able to have i don't know a, a last champion or a flex champion at lower level as an example again let's let's go let's go with the basics so for the goblin layer adventurer as fire then you have Horus as a tank, then you have Hexandra's healer, okay? The tank and the healer are not gonna bring you much, but still build them. Then you're gonna need two more people that will do AoE damage for you. So try and think of two people that do AoE damage, that's gonna be a priority. Then when we switch over to the Grave of Venom, which is the most important one again to farm, what you will need is, again, same principle, Traveler, Horus, Hexandra, they are gonna be your core. Then you're gonna need two more decrease attack champions or one more decrease attack champion and another healer those ones if you split well around uh, you know on the map can be even lower levels okay they can be level 50s or maybe even close to 70s depending on how high you push but i'm gonna make some guides on uh on those dungeons as well i just wanted to emphasize the importance of doing that even though you might not be doing the, the biggest damage for temporal vortex Keep this in mind. Number one priorities are going to be the Goblin Slayer and the Grave of Venom with Goblin coming first. Because, well, if you cannot farm the Goblin, you're not going to be able to get experience potion to build other people. And then when it comes to, like, you know, farming their ascensions, yes, we do have the 
the what's it called the i always forget the domains okay so if you need to farm the domains you can always just farm the stages two up until you get them to higher level okay so even if you don't get to stage three farming stage two should be enough to get yourself enough materials to get all of your team to 70 and then slowly keep progressing from there and it seems like my camera has been there for quite a while you know it it happens i don't know what's what's this i think there might be a loose cable anyway I just wanted to emphasize guys keep in mind i definitely need to check this because it keeps it keeps dying definitely keep in mind take advantage of this clip side torrent as much as you can because after this one's over that's gonna be it but yeah i think i'm just gonna kill my camera for now <laughs> anyway this is gonna be it for the video today guys thank you all for watching as always if you do enjoy my content don't forget to like this video subscribe to the channel to see when i upload next and i'm gonna see you on the next one peace love to care everyone bye guys